Okay, so I bought this thing at an auction three years ago for $2,250. It was a repo auction. Had been rolled, but just had to bend the handlebars up redneck style to fix it. And a battery because it had sat in storage for a year. And three years later, I haven't changed the oil. I haven't changed the brakes. All I've done is adjust the sprocket. And now the wheel bearings are bad. Front wheel bearings, rear wheel bearings. So I haven't done one on this kind of quad before. So not much of a learning experience for me. Because I've never actually owned a quad before this one. But I have fixed other people's quads. So let's see how to do it. The front bearings are pretty simple, but you can just see how much the wheel clunks and wobbles around. So that's no big deal. That's what they look like. There's the rear bearings and seals we'll be putting in in a minute. And when a bearing's worn and the wheel's sitting crooked, it moves the rotor crooked, so it wears your pads out on an angle. So I decided to put all new front and rear pads. Since I hardly got anything left on those pads not even a millimeter so very first thing to do is actually just try to crack the locking nuts to hold the drive hub on for the sprocket leave the machine on the ground in gear and get a pipe wrench or a big wrench whatever you've got to do that big set of channel locks uh, then once you get all that tight stuff loosened then you can think about doing other parts you know, you want everything to give you traction or friction so that you can turn those without the wheels spinning in the air in case you had it jacked up. So, it does look like I have the right size wrench. My big bulldozer set. Inch and seven eighths. So, uh, that's tight, but it's, it's moving. Well, I'll just get those two off right now, first step. Well, that was simple enough. So just remember which way they came off because this one's got a step on it so when this one clamps against it it compresses and locks it. So now I'm just removing the caliper. That's off. Now to put some slack on the chain adjuster bolts and then loosen the clampers off and shove everything the carrier in there a little bit forward. Now I've tapped the carrier a little bit forward. Chain's loose. I can just rotate the wheels and peel off the chain. Next step is to remove the wheel on this side and I'll be jacking it up now to do the drive hub just one axle nut but let me give that a shove and you can see how much that's wobbling and that's how I knew the bearings were bad I hope they haven't disintegrated well that couldn't have been easier now pry off the sprocket hub just enough to get off the splines And if I tap it here, I think the whole axle should just pop right out. I don't even have to take off that wheel. I hope. And that's working real well. I just walked around the other side, gave her a tug, and she came right out. Good thing it wasn't rusty in there, but judging by the color of the grease, the reason my bearings went bad is because the seals failed and water got in and you can see how orange they are between the seals and the bearing. Now I'm going to check if there's any locking clips once I pop those seals out before I try to knock the bearings out. To get the seals out, just stick a big screwdriver in there and pry. Simple as that. Hmm. I don't see any locking clips so that means it could be real easy. Now for the other side. Now there's a bearing spacing collar in there and you can move it to one side it sort of floats around. Now I'm going to get the end of a bolt with a nice flat end and put it against that edge and hit it with a hammer and hopefully it knocks out the other bearing. And then to get out this bearing I just put a big socket in, hit that spacing thing and knock this bearing out. I actually just found an easier way to get these out. I just took a extension off my half inch drive with a socket on it, shoved it through the hole, pushed down that little collar till I could catch the lip of the bearing, and just give it a few taps and she jumped right out. Now for the other side. To get the other side out I'm just going to put this big socket against that spacing collar, and give it a couple taps, 
And that worked like a dream. Ugh, there was water in there. Now I gotta roll up a rag, shove it through there lots of times, get all the crap cleaned out. Clean off the axle surfaces, re-grease everything, and knock some bearings back in. Whenever you reinstall bearings, you never hit them on the inner part or you'll dent the little balls and where they roll in the race. And the bearing will fail a short while after. You have to find something big enough to press them in. And very often what works best is the old bearing. You just get the new bearing started, tap it in with a piece of flat metal or whatever. Then once it's flush, put the old bearing against it and hit it any way you want because it doesn't matter. And the old bearing hopefully will contact here and push it in from the outside edge and then it won't damage the inner surface of the bearing. Now it's very important that the surfaces that the bearing slides on are clean and free of rust and debris. So I've sanded and wire brushed the bow surfaces and now I'm going to put a little bit of grease on. And it's also a, the best idea to put a little bit of grease or oil inside the edge of the seal too because if you put on a dry seal, dry seal can burn out in one day just rubbing on a piece of bare metal. I've cleaned out the hole, I've cleaned up the spacer, I'm going to smear some grease in there. I even like to put a little bit of grease on the bearing fitting surface just to help them slide in a little bit easier. So you can see the seals are greased. It's very important to grease all the splines because water gets in between those splines and erodes them and you see orange dust coming out and one day you might not have any drive because there's no splines left. They've chewed themselves right off now I just have to, I've got that seal surface greased, now I just have to grease that one and we're all set for reassembly after I get the bearings pushed in. Now since I'm going to use the old bearings as an installation tool, there's a possibility they could get stuck in there, then there's almost no way to get them out. So I'm going to split them with a cutting wheel grinder, throw away all the middle bits, just leave myself the outside ring of the bearing with a slice in it like a snap ring. Then it'll be perfect for pressing the bearing in, and there'll be no tension on it to knock it back out. I'll do that for both. Well, I'll just have to do it to one bearing to do both sides. That sure was easy. Now I've just set that in there by hand. I found a little block of aluminum, but you can use steel. And just spank that puppy in till it's level and try to pop, poke it in straight. Then put this against it, the metal plate. Put it in the rest of the way till it hits bottom. Remember, never hit that surface. She's in. Now for the next step. That was too easy. Now just to get the piece of bearing out. Now for the next side. Your piece of bearing also makes a perfect seal installer. When I tapped that in, the bearing didn't quite hit bottom because my piece of old bearing didn't stick out far enough. So, I can add the other old bearing on top use my little plate and just pound in the last millimeter. That worked out awesome. Now to put the new seal in the same way. That was too easy again. Now one more seal and I'm ready to throw the axle back in. Oh then I gotta put the brake pads on. Now before you slide the axle all the way in, don't forget to slip your chain over it. Now the sprocket Peel the chain on, just rotate the wheel, that's done. Now the locking nuts. Of course I remembered which way they came off, just like so. No Loctite required because that surface locks that surface. Now tighten this nut down, but not incredibly tight, just ordinary tightness. Then bring this one to tighten up against it. And when you get both wheels on the ground, you get one wrench to hold this and the other one to turn this and tighten them up against each other. And while it's in the air, just spin everything and make sure everything feels good and there isn't any end play. This side and everything all worked out. Both wheels are on, machines in gear. Now just to lock this collar against the other nut and then adjust those two little 12 millimeters to set the chain tension. I adjusted those evenly 
get the right chain tension now to tighten down all the cleavage bolts on the carrier well the axle job is done all bearings and seals done everything's replaced put together and although I don't have any beers beside me it was not even a two beer job so now for the brakes so I have to bend over the little locking tabs on the retainer pins unscrew those and go to the next step huh, that was easy they jumped right out now what I did was I just set both old pads just laying there stuck a screwdriver in this gap it's a flat one rotated it and that worked like a clamp and it pushed the piston all the way back to make room to put the bigger thicker new pads on so just drop one in there set one in there put the retainer bolts back in you don't have to finish tightening them up till the whole caliper is bolted on and that's it <clears throat> so easy it's only a 10 minute job Now for the front wheels, bearings and brakes. Oh, that's bad. All those damn tubers driving my stuff. They don't give a shit. Actually, front brakes aren't as bad as I thought. Since I'm cheap, I'll put those packages away and save until it really does need front brakes. It sure does need a bearing. Now removing the caliper holding bolts and there's another one down there. Oh, I guess I'll have to tap that with a hammer. Well, luckily my bearings never seized up. There's no scoring on the shaft. So it's basically knock them out the same way as I did on the back axle housing. They have that little carrier spacer in the middle. That'll knock out the seals and everything. Or you can just pry the seals out with a screwdriver first. It's up to you. And that's why I'm going to do it. I just moved that little spacer a little bit crooked so I can catch the edge of the bearing. Tap it, she'll be out. Hmm, the one bearing was so badly worn it came out in little pieces. The other one came out no problem. Now install everything as I showed you on the rear axle by using the old bearing to put in the new bearing here tapping down plate grease in the middle don't forget your spacer should be no problem and tap it in because these bearings aren't very big I can actually knock them in just with sockets because sockets touch the outside edge and not the middle that's the one I used to do the other side with. Now the seals. You can just push those in with the socket too. Some grease as I mentioned before. Some grease on these sealing disc that this slide on grease on the axle shaft and we're ready for reassembly you don't have to make these very tight and it's the thing that sets the bearing tightness is actually the spacer between the two bearings so under tightening is bad over tightening is bad just you know just a little bit of hand pressure till the cotter key lines up and just bolt the caliper back on, put the wheel on, and you're done. Now I just have to do the other side and we're ready to rock and ride. Sweet. And the best thing of all now, the maintenance of everything I have at the farm. The building, my off-road machines, my crappy cars, I mean my famous cars. It's all a tax write-off. So, there's what everything costs me. Sweet. All said and done, it was about a four beer job, all four wheels.